Welcome back to another episode of The Turning Point. Make sure you guys smash the crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more Oz content. This week's episode of Turning Point, or the Point of No Return, is the weird phase. You're about to see some Twilight Zone level metagame stuff out of this event. So, starting things off here with the next play event for this week, your overall participation has Malice and Ryzeal both at the same level of participants. Now, this is fine in my personal opinion. Uh, both, it's been pretty known that Ryzil and Malice have been like eternal rivals for most of this format. You know, they're the two that are competing with each other for the golden spot. And unfortunately, the story is as old as this format is now is Ryzil is the one that will still, you know, overcome Malice and be the top deck, as is today's tournament results. Now, we also have two Blue Eyes players in participation here. Now, for those of you that are like, oh my gosh, you know, like, Blue Eyes is actually, it's a really good deck, Robbie. No, no, it's not. In comparison to the Rizal Malice meta, you're like tier two, okay? Sorry to tell you that. You can do some really cool things with Blue Eyes, and that's fine, but Blue Eyes is not coming anywhere near Malice or Rizal in terms of meta. It would appear that a few people still play are still playing Snake Eyes out here. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I find it very interesting that we have an OCG ban list coming up in a couple of days. I'm very curious to know what they're going to do to Snake Eyes now that Ryzeal and Malice have just blown this deck out of the water. Uh, and then we had two Memento. Actually pretty cool to still see. Memento has been crawling its way out of the abyss out here and actually doing well. And then we have Fallen of Albaz. Somebody chose to play Heroes. Okay, I guess Macrocosmodot deck is pretty good. Uh, we also have Labyrinth. Looks like an Unchained, a Thunder Dragon list. Well, that's spicy. We also have some Fish uh, with Bahamut Shark representation, Ecclesia, Magical Musketeer, and a Singular Voiceless Voice player. Okay, I mean, overall, your representation here is about what you would expect out of a localized level event. You know, you're going to have the the more meta-organized players that are going to decide, do I want waifus or do I want, you know, Math Mech 2.0? You're going to have the people that are going to stay, you know, loyal to the former meta because they don't want to shift. And you're going to have people that are going to be like, ooh, blue eye structure deck. And then the rest of it will be, I'm going to play what I like to play slash meta um, from older times and enjoy my strategy. All right, now... All things must come to an end. Your top eight. Ho, ho, ho. Don't let this, uh, don't let this skew of three Malice decks in top cut fool you because, LOL, no, Malice was, uh, was not the best deck in the room because Ryzeal still managed to beat it out. It's just funny that all three Malice players ended up all topping simultaneously out here. So, to me, that's a W. Alright, now, two Ryzeal lists also in top cup, which means that one dropped off, very unfortunate, but you tried. Alright, maybe you just had bad beats. Uh, yeah, we also had one Ecclesia still doing pretty all right. Um, one Thunder Dragon. I really wish I had the... See, the thing I'm most disappointed about here is, like, I have Infinite Mas Malice and Infinite Ryzeal list, but I don't have the Thunder list, and I don't have the Blue Eyes list. I think that's the most annoying thing when we're looking at these tournament results is, like, oh, yes, here's your top eight, but they only post top four. Like... Yeah, I I don't like that. It's very annoying, and I really wish we could see more info for this. But hey, good news, everybody. A Blue Eyes deck made top eight. It did not, in fact, make top four. So congratulations to the Heavy Malice and the Heavy Rise Zero representation. If you're still watching this, don't worry. You're about to see some very interesting lists, including Dogmatica Ryzeal. Standard is a standard is. This is going to be your first place Ryzeal list. Now, we're not trying anything spicy out here. Uh, actually, I'm kind of happy to see, that, you know, we're still doing the Triple Seventh Ascension, but we've cut out the Seventh Tachyon stuff that we were using to search for the Seventh Ascension to get that little searchability going. Uh, I think we've kind of come to the realization that, you know, searchability and consistency while these are extremely good things, um, you don't need to have gas, 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 swerve, swerve, swerve 5,000 out here at every single turn. Still playing the one aggregator, that's fine. I do see that we are playing two ultimate slayers. Ultimate slayer, I feel like, in the mirror match out here, is probably the best thing that you can kind of throw at your opponent. You know, the, the control aspect of getting the immediate removal off of one of these stupid monsters 
is definitely very strong. Uh, still doing maximum mall charming. Also the fact that, you know, it looks like we're kind of heading back into a mini droll format, which is kind of funny to me. And I, I would probably like to blame a little bit of that on Maxi. But Fuawarso is going to be absolutely mandatory in main decks going forward. You can't even really, you know, attempt to play the game without Fuawarso. And that's, that's kind of a scary thing. Also do see we are playing the Heavy Storm down here. Uh, we have the Judgments. And of course, if you're an OCG player, you get to red reboot your opponent. Isn't that fun? Ah, yes. Imagine opening up the one of against your opponent's full back row and then OTKing them. Feels absolutely just the best. All right. Ooh, so this is interesting to me. This is 60 card by Steel Malice with double grass look screener. Now, if you're looking at this list, you're and you're probably going, okay, so we're just absolutely reached the most toxic levels of Yu-Gi-Oh. Yes, yes, you have. Because you have triple fairy tale snow to banish your malice monsters to go through this nice little cycle of resources every single turn. I feel like fairy tale snow is like the biggest win more card out here ever. Plus, you have the fiendsmith combo dump build into this deck as well. Uh, to be fair, though. I mean, you're just focusing on what Beatrice and Lacrima is like the the combo for that. You still have the Apollosa to make. Um, post side decking, I mean, you have the thrust attack talents. You're siding the IP, which is hilarious to me. Poor IP. Not even getting any real hang time in here. And, of course, I see we are doing some Nightmare Griffin plays in here as well. I mean, hey, you, you have three Malice Trap cards. You may as well take advantage of them or, you know, try to pull back something a little bit more usable. Also, you know, I'm we're not playing... Okay, we are playing one brain regain. I was going to say, like, if we're doing the Lubellion stuff, like, we should be maximizing on literally the best cards that we can out here for the combo line. But, hey, you know what? Cute is what I'm going to call this. This is... This is a pile. And a pile I didn't expect to see. Woo! Some standard Malice for you here. So, standard Malice, you know, the biggest things you got to remember about Malice is, you know... You can play some pile decks like what you just saw there. But the, the biggest thing is you're going to be just cyber slate climbing, all right? You're going to be using things like the Neo Tempest Terahertz to set up your lines of play, put your opponent into that bad position, and you just kind of call it a day there. Um, post side decking, I do see we are playing the double um, copies of Ultimate Slayer. I find it very funny. And we've traveled so far along the spectrum of the meta out here that we've now returned back to Meteor Logic Aggregator and Ultimate Slayer as these cleanup cards for the meta. Like, it's just so funny to me that we've reached that point in the game just being so toxic. Good stuff. Uh, and of course, a gold sarcophagus. I feel like that's a pretty big one of that's That's definitely the levels of what Fallen of Albaz was doing. All right, and our last list here. All right, this is, I think, the most interesting thing out of today, besides the 60-card pile. You know, I give them a little bit of credit out here, but this is playing the Dogmatica Ritual stuff in the deck, which means this deck managed to overcome the rest of the metagame that was present in the competition and go, hey... I am the next challenger in the room. There is nothing that you can do to try to stop me. And I'm sitting here, I'm still looking at this list after this event. I'm perplexed. Because, like, you go down what? Although the rising standard lines of play, you have the bonfires to toggle into that. And then at the end of the combo line, you can Nadir Servant deploy into the Ecclesia, into the Maximus, into the Albazoa line. And then your opponent's just kind of forced to deal with an Albazoa rip. And then, like, the rest of what the Ryzeal package is going to put on your opponent in terms of pressure. That's ingenious. I've not seen any list to this date trying anything like this. And i got to give creativity a little bit of a boost out here, you know. When you look at, you know, these tournament results and you look at how things are going in the course of the meta... I like what I'm seeing here. I like the idea that players are trying out these weird ideas and they're finding success with them. And that's what you need to see kind of going forward in the meta is things like this are innovation. I like that. So what do you guys think about this cluster pile of stuff today? Definitely interesting. Please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. And I will see your beautiful faces back here in day, guys. Peace. Patrons.
Thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.